In the 1980s, Boeing Aviation defied the odds by conjuring a weapon they believed could shift the odds on the battlefield. No one saw it coming, racing against time to craft something groundbreaking. In just under 10 months, pouring their own blood, sweat, and funds into the project, Boeing hammered out an anti-aircraft powerhouse, rugged, dependable, on the move, and lethally precise. The Avenger came as a devastating and cheap anti-aircraft solution. The moment she rolled out, the United States Army took notice. The Avenger wasn't just a budget-friendly war machine. She was ready to claim dominion over the skies. Armed to the teeth with eight FIM-92 Stinger surface-to-air missiles and a 50 caliber M3P machine gun, this Titan was ready to unleash hell. For three decades, the Avenger was an unyielding sentinel against cruise missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles, low-flying enemy birds, and choppers. When the venerable Avenger seemed ready to retire her guns, history called her back to the front lines. This time, she was summoned to Ukraine's icy, unforgiving battlefields. On their own dime, and driven by audacity, Boeing fast-tracked the Avenger's development in the 1980s. Within a mere ten months, this cutting-edge system evolved from a concept to a tangible asset, ready for Uncle Sam's scrutiny. The Avenger Low Altitude Air Defense System, or ANTWQ-1, is a top-class, highly mobile air defense weapon of the U.S. Army, armed with lethal firepower, with eight FIM-92 Stinger surface-to-air missiles in two missile launcher pods. This self-propelled surface-to-air missile system provides short-range air defense protection for ground forces against cruise missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles, low-flying fixed-wing aircraft, and helicopters. The battle turret was designed to fit on HMMWV Humvees, including the M998, M1026, or M1097. However, it's versatile enough to be attached to other military trucks, trailers, and tracked vehicles. Boeing had been right in betting their money on this venture. The U.S. Army became interested in the project as soon as the prototypes were ready. At first, their interest was mainly driven by Boeing's flawless reputation in the U.S. Still, the Army was on board when the top brass saw the weapon in action. By May 1984, the United States Army was putting the Avenger through its paces at Yakima Training Center, Washington. The trial showcased the Avenger's prowess. Three FIM-92 Stinger missiles were unleashed, demonstrating the system's deadly accuracy. The first test saw the Avenger nail a direct hit while tearing across the terrain at 20 miles per hour. Under the cloak of night and holding its ground, the second replicated this feat with another bullseye. The third test, a challenge with the Avenger on the move in pouring rain, didn't score a direct hit, but the missile still flew dangerously close to the target, earning a tactical kill. Remarkably, the operators behind these shots were greenhorns, never having fired the missile before. Amid the Cold War, such performance at a reasonable price was irresistible. Fast forward to 1987, and the U.S. Army signed checks for 325 units of this powerful machine. Boeing delivered the first Avengers in 1988 to replace the aging Vulcan anti-aircraft guns, the M163 and M167. While both the Marine Corps and National Guard later adopted it, it was eventually phased out by the Marines. By 1989, the Avenger was undergoing its initial operational test and evaluation, or IOT&E, a two-stage trial by fire. Stage one was about acquisition and tracking at Fort Hunter Liggett, California, while stage two let the missiles fly at White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico. In February 1990, the Avenger was given the green light for operational deployment, stepping in to replace the M163 and M167 Vulcan air defense systems. The battlefield now had two new Guardians, the M998 High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle, or HMMWV Avenger, and the beefier M1097 Heavy HMMWV Avenger, both riding on the iconic Humvee chassis, ready to bring thunder to America's enemies. The Avenger system had several configurations, including the basic, slew-to-Q, or STC, and upgun versions. The basic configuration features a gyro-stabilized air defense turret with two Stinger missile launcher pods on a modified heavy Humvee. The STC version allows for automatic targeting based on external cues, and the upgun variant, developed for the 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment's 2005 Iraq deployment, includes modifications for both air defense and unit defense roles. The Avenger first flexed her muscles operationally,
during the high-tension lead-up to the Persian Gulf War. Her stellar performance there was a game-changer, prompting the United States Army to double down with a hefty order for an additional 679 vehicles, bringing the grand tally to 1,004 units. This powerhouse wasn't just a one-hit wonder. She soared again in support of NATO operations amid the Bosnian War. The weapon system became especially proficient in tracking and eliminating enemy helicopters with speed and deadly accuracy, leading some who witnessed the system in action to dub it the Helicopter Hunter. Using the system's sophisticated targeting capabilities, the Avengers crew could rapidly identify and track the enemy helicopters. In such high-stakes situations, the gunner inside the Avenger would lock onto the target using infrared ultraviolet guided missiles. Once a lock was achieved, the Avenger would fire one of its Stinger missiles. These projectiles, known for their fire and forget capability, would use infrared guidance to home in on the helicopter. The missile, traveling at a maximum speed of Mach 2.2, would close the distance rapidly, leaving little time for the helicopter to evade. Upon impact, the high explosive fragmentation warhead of the Stinger would tear through the hull of the helicopter. The public got a good look at the Avenger when she stood guard around the Pentagon, a somber sentinel on the first anniversary of the September 11th attacks in 2002. The Avenger's presence wasn't just for show. She was battle-ready during the United States military's operations in the harsh terrains of Afghanistan and Iraq. By 2004, the Army boasted 26 battalions armed with the Avenger Short Range Air Defense, or SHORAD, system. However, shifting gears in military priorities during the operations in Iraq and Afghanistan saw this number dwindle to just nine by early 2017. Two were active, and seven were in the Army National Guard. Out of over 1,100 Avengers built, only about 400 remained in service. In March 2018, the 678th Air Defense Artillery Brigade was deployed to Europe in a bold move reminiscent of Cold War posturing. This deployment was a direct response to Russia's renewed aggression post-2014, particularly the annexation of Crimea. It was the first time since the Cold War that an American air defense unit had set foot on European soil. The Army strategy included the deployment of 72 Avenger sets to bolster U.S.-European command, a clear signal of America's commitment to defend its allies and interests against any threat. Currently, the Avenger is being used by the U.S. Army, Bahrain, Egypt, Iraq, Taiwan, and Chile. It has become as reliable and ubiquitous as the Humvee it's mounted on. Still, with the Ukraine conflict, a new front soon opened up for the aging Avenger. In 2022, the United States stepped up its game in the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe by delivering a game-changing asset to Ukraine, four Avenger air defense systems. This marked a pivotal moment in Ukraine's defense capabilities since the onset of the Russian invasion. The Pentagon, signaling unwavering support, hinted at further reinforcements down the line. Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh gave a clear rundown of the Avengers' strategic importance. Quote, the Avengers short-range air defense system will also provide Ukraine with the capability to protect Ukrainian troops and critical infrastructure against unmanned aerial systems and helicopters. The Avenger is a logical and ideal step forward for Ukrainian defense, as it uses the AN-MPQ-64 Sentinel radar and Stinger missiles. In its portable form, the Stinger has already been deployed with remarkable results by the Ukrainian military. A high-ranking U.S. defense official underscored the strategic edge provided by the Avenger, quote, We continue to see the Russians wary of venturing into Ukrainian airspace at all, and if they do, they don't stay long. I think that speaks volumes about how contested the airspace is over there. But the Avenger's story extends beyond the current Eastern European conflict. Once thought to be nearing obsolescence, this Boeing-manufactured anti-aircraft system shows it's still a force to be reckoned with. In a bold move in March 2017, Boeing unveiled a revamped Avenger. This upgrade wasn't just a facelift, it was a complete overhaul. The system now boasts AIM-9X Sidewinder and Longbow Hellfire missiles, not to mention a cutting-edge directed energy weapon perched on top. Plans are afoot to integrate this powerhouse into various platforms, including the joint light tactical vehicle, Striker, and Bradley fighting vehicle. 
Boeing's ambition to mount the Avenger turret on a striker for the Army's interim maneuver short-range air defense requirement was bold. Still, ultimately, the Army wasn't sold. The modifications required seemed too daunting, and Boeing's proposal for the Army to provide the turrets in short supply in the inventory was a sticking point. Nonetheless, the Avengers' evolution and adaptability suggest that this veteran of air defense might just have a few more tricks up its sleeve. The weapon system created almost on a whim might continue to shape the battlefields of the world for decades to come.